No, I, I see your point. You, you said something interesting about the Kesagatami and um, and that's that's the thing with grappling. You see, I I've looked through multiple old uh, Koryu books, and you tend to see what what each school likes to focus on more. Some you see they do more of like seated self defense, maybe in these uh, like Japanese style, like in their homes and the homes. Yes, in the yes, it's the suwari waza or like sitting down or uh, more standing self defense. It's, some you have like the tenjin shinyoriyu, you see like a very big randori section where you see um, tate shiho or you see also togari, juji gitame. You see, so a lot of them focus on various things, and from what I've seen, like I always like to make this joke uh you know, gracie jiu-jitsu is classical judo and it's 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 in a light spirit but in, in a lot of ways it is like the and what i mean by that is the fundamentals mastered and that's a very difficult thing like um there are no black belt techniques just techniques done at black belt level however if i if i had to take it from my own experience and my own observation um Kesagatame is not so much emphasized in jujitsu today, and more it's more of a judo thing because all my jujitsu instructors told me, and they're also judo black belt, so they tell me in judo, kesagatame is at the end, at the, or jusko bu, like at the very end. You cannot build from there, so that's why we opt for more side control, neon belly mount, or this. Uh, particular um, pattern that you see in jiu-jitsu. So my question to you is, what is Elio Gracie's emphasis from like his physical abilities, what he liked to do, what he um, what he was good at? Because we all have those like just by, by nature good at techniques. Like for example, me, I've scored in competition more in jiu-jitsu than throws, just to give you an example. So what was Ariel Gracie really good at and what did he emphasize and really if if he added something that would also be great to know. Yeah, I, I feel very comfortable talking about this because I trained judo for as long as I trained jiu-jitsu almost. I started training judo as a kid and I had some amazing judo teachers. So I feel very comfortable comparing and contrasting the two methods. Um, I was talking to my brothers recently about on the same subject, and one thing that we realized as we were talking is that very pe few people nowadays actually understand what Elio Gracie taught. Because we must remember that Elio Gracie only taught private classes, he never taught group classes. And the people who, who took private lessons from him directly are not part of this debate. So many people who speak about Elio Gracie's system, they have never taken a lesson from Elio Gracie. They have never really been Elio Gracie's students. They've never seen footage of Elio Gracie fighting because it doesn't exist with the exception of a few minutes of that Kimura match and a few minutes of the Kato match. So it becomes very difficult for them to be able to assess his style. And then you see a lot of speculation, looking at family members and how they teach and how they fight, and assuming that because a certain family member fights a certain way or teaches a certain way, then that Elio Gracie also did the same thing. And that's not quite true because, as you said, not only the different Koryus they had very unique styles, but even individuals who learn from the same teacher will have very unique systems of, of grappling in the case of the sport of jiu-jitsu or judo. So it is no difference, different in the Gracie family. You have different Gracies who have different styles. And that's something that is very well explained in the book Game of Jiu-Jitsu 
by Yuki Otani and Taro Miyake, which was published in England in the first decade of the 20th century. And it says that one of the most um, charming aspects of Jiu-Jitsu is that every pack practitioner will develop his personal style. And so Elio Grace's style is one that most people don't know and don't understand. My brothers and I, because of our relationship, because of our father's relationship with Elio Grace, they were best friends. My father was a family doctor. My father and his father, our grandfather, started training back in the 50s. So it was a, a very long and close relationship. We were very fortunate that we were able to learn directly for him, from him through private classes throughout our entire childhood, teenage years, and into our teaching years. Because when I first started teaching in Miami, he would come here every year. My brothers were in Brazil learning from him, already knowing that we were going to open up a school. And so we had that access to him that very few people have. And many times when I listen to people talk about Elio Gracie, I realize that they have no idea what they're talking about. Respectfully, I say that. That they're ignorant about Elio Grace's style. So I'm very happy with this opportunity um, to talk a little bit about his style, to talk a little bit about his contributions. And when I say Elio Grace, I, I, I never want to leave out his brother Carlos, because I think that they um, were very united in their efforts and, and everything they accomplished was as a team. Obviously, each one had a specific role, and I think Elio Grace's role was not was more connected to the mat itself and to the technical development. And Carlos, obviously, he was the pioneer. He was the first one to practice, the first one to learn. But eventually, he trusted his brother so much on the mat that he was able to focus on other areas, not only the promotion of jiu-jitsu in Brazil, the expansion of jiu-jitsu in Brazil, the marketing of jiu-jitsu, if you want to use that word, but also philosophical matters related to nutrition, most specifically um, spiritual matters. But Elio Gracie was the one after a certain point who was mostly responsible for the, the techniques and the instruction and that aspect of Jiu Jitsu. Um, people ask me, you know, who is his best representative when it comes to the fighting skills? And that's something that my father used to say, and it's controversial. I said this recently in a in a big podcast in Brazil, and it was controversial. I said Carlson Gracie is, in my opinion. Really? Yes, really. <laughs> like Drysdale came on my channel a while back, and, and he was just loving Carlson Gracie. Yes, like and the I fight think with that Santana. At, and at, I, I, I'm sorry to interrupt. The fight with Santana was amazing. He threw him with Uchimata, came back up him with Uchimata, but the other leg. On the left, yes. Yeah. Yes, he did a uh, Hidari Uchimata, which is amazing, and, and Harai Goshi as well. And yeah. uh, and so, and you can see his striking techniques. And I think that's very much representative of what he learned from his uncle, Elio Gris. Mm -hmm. I know that sometimes people say, well, but Carlson, he would say, my Jiu-Jitsu is Carlson Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, it's not Elio Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. You have to understand that at that point, there was a lot of family. You know, you know how families can be. Every family has problems and fights. And Carlson was hurt by his uncle, who was also hurt by his nephew. So they would say things publicly to, to try to insult each other, to hurt each other. That many ways did not represent um, what really happened. The truth is that Carlson was a student of Elio since there are pictures of Elio teaching him when he was when Carlson was still three years old, right? And and Carlson was Elio's protege during Elio's prime when he was the leader of the school and teaching the classes. And Carlson represented in the ring Elio Grace's fighting philosophy, which right. is a complete fighting system. Right? We don't have footage of Elio Grace's no holds barred fights, but we have um, the newspaper articles. For example, when he fought uh, Dudu in 1935, he wins the fight with a sidekick to the solar plexus. But before that, he actually throws a, a, a crescent kick to the face of Dudu, 
who spits a tooth onto the mat, and then Elio Gracie used an Ashibarai technique to sweep the foot <laughs> out of the ring. <laughs> This is this is written in the newspapers from the time. But so Elio Gracie was throwing high kicks. Elio Gracie was a student of the throwing techniques of Nagewaza as well. And and so when you see Carlson throwing with Uchimata, throwing with Harai Goshi, when you see Carlson throwing kicks and throwing punches, that's Elio Gracie's system that he's representing. Elio Gracie was in his corner together with Carlos. So Carlson Gracie, but, but, but people don't realize that Elio Gracie later shifted his focus from fighting, from ring fighting, to teaching self-defense to average people. And Carlson kind of continued in that path of training fighters. And so, I, but I think obviously, and I'm not going to take Carlson's credit as far as his innovation, I'm sure that he also contributed because, as I said, everybody's going to develop their own personal style. But I think that the one in the family who was most aligned with, I'm not talking about teaching, the art of teaching, self-defense, the methodology. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about fighting, especially ring fighting, no holds barred fighting, MMA, if you want to use that term. I think that Carlson was the one that was most aligned with Elio Gracie's jiu-jitsu um, and what Elio Gracie did. I see a lot of people saying, well, because Elio was closed-minded. Those are people who don't understand the school, the, the Gracie Academy in the 1930s was a melting pot of everything that was happening in the Brazil fighting scene. There were capoeira representatives training there. There were boxers training there. And they all learned from each other. So you think that the crescent kick that Elio Gracie, what's the origin of that? I don't think that's from Maeda. I think that's from Capoeira. Capoeira, they had students who were Capoeira experts, and I'm sure they were exchanging information. Elio Gracie had a judo teacher called Tada, a Japanese judo teacher at one point, who was training him in the throwing techniques. Elio Gracie would bring boxers to train Carlson, to train João Alberto Barreto. So what people refer to as MMA, Today, they were doing it back then. They were training back then. And so a lot of there are a lot of misconceptions. People say, oh, the first one to do MMA was Marco Ruas. With all respect to Marco Ruas, he was great in everything that he did. Oh, no, it was Hollish, Rawls Gracie. He was the first one to venture into other practices. It's just not true. This is really the history of the Gracies have always been one where they have been exchanging and training with different people and incorporating whatever works into their fighting system. So the first thing that I would say about Elio Gracie's Jiu-Jitsu, complete. An emphasis on striking, an emphasis on throwing and takedowns, an emphasis on ground fighting, instead of a specialization on a pure grappling style. 